Welcome to Football Friday Night. It's the second week of the playoffs here. We're at Pikeville High School, Hillard Howard Field. Chuck Scoville along with Kevin Tackett and the one and the only Dr. Don Bevins behind the camera for Intermountain Sports as we bring you Hazard and Pikeville. And uh, these two teams just met a couple of weeks ago, Kevin. Yeah, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, Charlie. And uh, here's set the kickoff here. Looks like Hazard's kicking. Pikeville handled them pretty good, but of course, you know, now it's playoff time, so anything can be expected to so. kind of a short kick coming up to uh, one of the up backs that's number nine Jordan Price he gets rocked and uh, is the ball loose looks like Michael held on to it Price he was still on his feet struggling for yardage there a few seconds after the initial hit he paid the price didn't he Charles? yeah <laughs> he didn't want to go down Pikeville starts at their own 36 just underway here these two teams of course no strangers to each other. Uh, normally the last 15, 20 years, if uh, you talk about a district champion, most of the time it was Pikeville, and if it wasn't Pikeville, it was usually Hazard. Yeah, they usually beat each other for that championship. Uh -huh. so. but, uh, Beautiful yeah. night for football here. You couldn't ask for any better this time of year. Up under center, give off shorthand. Well, he's going to keep the football. The quarterback faked the handoff, and he got nothing, and then he gets slung down late. Tim Honaker there. So, you know, Honaker, he picked up a couple, Charlie, but like I said, didn't he? Okay, the carrier, ball carrier was harming. We thought it was. Two yards on the play. The Honaker faked me out. They had hold of him and slung him back about, about five yards. And uh, he had given off the football very stealthily to Harmon, who picked up uh, short yardage on that, second down and eight. I have to watch the hands of Mr. Honaker on this play. And we've already got a uh, quick timeout. Pikeville wants to talk about things. So with that uh, early break, we'll take a um, time in here, I guess, to talk about these uh, two teams. Uh, Pikeville comes in with an eight and three record. Hazard, uh, not quite as good this year. Got a lot of young players, but as usual, they've got some good athletes. Oh, yes, uh, Tyler Elringer, their quarterback, uh, having another excellent year. I think he's, what is he, Charlie? He's only like a junior, uh, just a sophomore. Sophomore, actually. yeah. And then a uh, couple of the running backs uh, are underclassmen, so they come in here, I think, around four or five victories and uh, six or seven losses. But uh, they won a big ball game last week against Paintsville. They came back against Paintsville in the final, I think, what, five, six minutes and was able to take it out. I think Paintsville was up like 14 or something, and they... Scored a couple of touchdowns late and then actually beat him in overtime. So. Olinger, uh, another in a long line of Olingers who have played at uh, Hazard. Uh, Ashley and Darrell Olinger uh, preceded him. Back to live action now. Snap coming to number five, Teddy Honaker. A flag down on the play. Honaker on the outside finds plenty of running room, breaks through one tackle, and gets all the way down to the 33 yard line. Boy, we've got a flag way back at the 37 of Pikeville. I believe it's coming back. Yep. That's normally in an area where you've got a clip or an illegal block or a hold, and we've got a hold on Pikeville. Very good run by Ted Honaker, but uh, be all for nothing. He'll come back with the holding call. 10 yard penalty on the play. The ball placed down on the. Pretty nice crowd tonight, but uh, back in the early and mid 90s when Pikeville was uh, playing for all those state titles and Hazard uh, had a great program down there. They're, like we say, they're young this year. This place would have been packed and rocking. Still rocking. It's just yeah. On the carry, number 24, Harmon gets all the way out to about the original line of scrimmage, right around the 36, 37 yard line. He picked up uh, out to the close to about 11 yards yard on that line. or 10, so we've got 12 yards here early in the ball game on two carries. Picked up uh, about 11, third down and nine, it looks like for Pikeville. 10, 20 to go here in the opening quarter. When that uh, kind of like a wishbone side pedal side saddle tee. Harmon in motion goes out here to the near side back to pass. Honaker looks for Harmon and Harmon stepped inside. The pass went outside incomplete and Pikeville will turn it over. They're going to have to kick it away. So Hazard has got to feel good about at least the initial series. Uh, no damage done. 
no damage done. And of course, they avoided the big run by Ted Honecker, which came back with the penalty. So now Pipe will punt to see that number there for Pipe will kicking the ball away and try to get the hazard number here so we can Elliot get these. back to punt for the Panthers. Clay Elliott, 52. Big guy back there kicking. Gets a high kick coming over here to the near side of the field. It's going to bounce and stay inbounds and roll down to about the 20 yard line all the way down to the 18 before it goes out. Nice kick. Very nice kick by Elliott, too. Like you said, the big guy. Kick in the rolls out of bounds on the 18-yard line. Almost a, Where Hazard will have the ball first and ten. Rolls out better than a 50-yard kick, 18. Charlie. Or Chuck. He's got no return on the play either. Mm -hmm. That uh, okay. beneficial for Pike. I know they lost to Hazard either last year or the year before on a punt return, so they always leery of Hazard's speed. They've always got a couple of speedy players down there in Perry County playing for the Bulldogs. Give off and wow, man, he's hit no hole there. Pikeville kind of collapsed the uh, gap there and he ran right into the defenders uh, for a loss of a couple. I think that was Casey Rowe and uh Elliot. No on the play, ball carried by Adams. Adams. Adams, the ball carrier, and like you said, Charlie, nowhere to go. Uh, matter of fact, well, let's go bring up second, second and 11. For... Man in motion is uh, number five, Mitchell Campbell. Give off, goes straight up the middle, and uh, I'll linger on the key. And Got some positive yards. Yeah, he got, got stood three. up and then popped. Give him three on the carry, so. Olinger on the carry for Hazard. Let's see what they got Olinger listed at here. You need third and seven for Find, the Bulldogs. Uh, Ball on the 21 yard line. Yeah, well, they got him listed at six foot, but they don't have any weight down there for Olinger. He's got a little. Huskiness on him, fires a pass out there. Uh, had a man right in his face, number five, Ted Honaker, blitzing and threw a pass out there that was incomplete. It's going to be fourth down and seven yards to go, so Hazard going to have to punt. So both teams have had the ball once, and neither one of them been able to mount a drive of any sort. Pikeville looked like they had something going, but that penalty kind of shot that one down. Good start for both defenses here, Charlie. And, uh, Chuck, I keep calling you Charlie. I don't know. I'll get it out. Didn't well, I'm a Charles, so it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's perfectly all right. I've been called worse. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Thank Black goodness not plane. recently. Offsides against Champagne, Pikeville. Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> As Don lets us know. A five-yard penalty against the Panthers. Yeah, I guess they've got Dr. Don uh, and Eric in the, uh, the Appalachian News the Express uh, talking about their adventures in uh, Cambodia, going to the historical the temples and sites around Angkor Wat. Desert. Interesting Desert. reading Desert. in the Appalachian Desert. News Express, today's Desert. edition. Kick by Hazard. Coming down to Jacob Sorty, feels it around the 42, up to midfield, gets into Hazard territory, breaks a couple of tackles inside the 40 to the 35, cuts back toward the middle, but he steps out of bounds, and they're going to mark him out, I think, back up toward the 34-yard line. Good return. Pop was going to start out Charlie with his second drive. Great field position, so. 8.20 to go here in the opening quarter. No score. 34-yard line of Hazard. Ted Honecker, a big quarterback in here, bringing Pyro back here. I'm thinking we Panthers might see a heavy dose of Daniel Harmon on this Hazard drive. 34. Jacob Sword, the punt returner there. He's a senior, and he's done a little bit of everything in his career. Played some quarterbacks, some running back, wide receiver. This year he's played wide receiver and returned kicks for him. Versatile player. He split out here to the near side, but Pikeville runs the football, and they get about three, maybe four down almost yeah, to the 30-yard line. Carry for the Panthers. Pick up of about three on the play. It'll be second and seven. It was all on Tim the 31-yard line carrier. of Hazard. Pick up of three, brings up third and seven. 
No score, 750 left in the opening quarter. Here from Pikeville on a just gorgeous Friday night. Give off, I think that was Harmon, the last man, and it looks like he may have coughed it up when he got hit too, and it's fumbled and goes over to Hazard. Ball carried by Harmon. Harmon lost the handle on that one as he got popped going in there, and uh, Hazard comes out of there with the football, so the defense is once again looking good so far early. Yeah, first turnover here, Charlie, and uh, like you said, he just got hit as soon as the exchange, and. Uh, he coughed it up, and now Hazard's going to take over here. 7.34 to go first in the first quarter. And, uh, 32 yard line. Good field position for them this time. <coughs> Both defenses are really playing good ball right now. Campbell looks like he's the deep man in the backfield, and it goes to him. He's a long, lanky kid trying to fight for yardage, breaks a couple of tackles, keeps the legs churning, and goes about three, maybe four yards upfield to the 41. He got a flag also, which could be a late Ball hit. Ball carried by Campbell of uh, Hazard. Pick up uh, about three on the play. Campbell built more and like a tight end. Uh, looks like he's about 6'3", maybe 6'4". Uh, broad shoulders, but uh, he was playing as the deep man in the backfield there. The penalty is against Pikeville's illegal personal foul. foul. And that moves it all the way down to the 49, Chuck. And the 49 yard line. Uh, penalty really Pikeville. helped out Hazard, Hazard here now. Will have the ball first and 10. So Hazard getting a break on a penalty inside Pikeville territory. Olinger up under center, man in motion number three. That is Colby Hoskins. Give off to Campbell again. He goes straight up the middle, fighting for yardage down to about the 46. Ball carried by Campbell. Pick up of about three more for Campbell. Pick up of about two on the play. It'll be second and eight. That's it, Charlie. He's a for hazard. He's a big, lanky kid. Uh, what is? How tall is he? Well, they don't have anything don't have on the roster. I was looking okay. to see, you know, uh, if they had any more information on him. It looks like he could be about 6'4", or 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah, he's a big kid. Uh, like I said, looks more like a linebacker or a tight end. Time out. We got a timeout by Hazard here, so 6.34 to go. We'll go ahead and take a break on your Intermountain Sports Network. All right, we'll back here. 6.34 to go, Hazard second and eight. Take away, Mr. Schofield. Man in motion is Hoskins, Olinger up under center. Flags down before anything happens, and well, they're gonna let the play keep going here. I thought they were gonna blow it dead, and Olinger decides he better run for his life, and he picks up a little positive yardage, about four or five yards up to about the, uh, about the 42, I think, was where they're gonna spot it. Yeah, penalties against Pike, or against Hazard, so. Uh, the Bulldogs. Bring that back. Bring up a second and probably 15. I think it was an illegal shift, wasn't it? Yeah. It's only five yards. Second and 12 or 13, depending on. We'll say 12. Chuck. Yeah, it looks closer to 12. Yeah. Ball was just on the other side of the 49, and they got to go all the way just on the other side of the 40, so. Dual wideouts here to the near side of the field. Backs in an eye behind Olinger. Give off to second man through. I think that was uh, Adams. Let's see. Hard to get these numbers. They've got white jerseys with kind of gold or yellow letters. Ball it's hard to read down them. To the 41 yard line of Pikeville. Adams carrying the ball for yep, Adams. Greg Adams. We've got him and uh, looks like Austin Blanton It'll both in the backfield now. And two. Austin Blanton's number 32. Adams, number 24, and Michael Campbell, who's carried some. Number five, the three main carriers for Hazard, and give off to, uh, looks like Adams once again. He fights for yardage, gets all the way down to the 30, and gets the first down. Adams, first down, Hazard. 
Well, he showed a burst of speed and some energy there. Very enthusiastic. I tell you, Hazard's fired up and Pikeville, uh, I know they handled him easily two or three weeks ago, but playoffs a totally different world. They've got to handle them again tonight. Yes, they do. And uh, Campbell ran and run real hard, running real hard, Chuck, and uh, picked up a big first down. And you're right, Pikeville might just be a little bit uh, complacent right now. Give up, I think that was 32 that time. Blant. Well, we'll find Adams. out. It was Adams. Yep, Adams, Blanton, Blanton in there with him. No game. Trent line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. Like I said, Chuck, these numbers are extremely It's important. like uh, trying to do the Allen Central That's numbers, it. yeah. You know, you need to say the exact same thing. Some numbers just don't stand out from a good distance on jerseys and uh, Hazard in their road white jerseys with the gold lettering. You just can't see them real well from up here. This is Campbell. I can tell by the, the build that time and he goes about a yard and that is it. Adams carries for <clears throat> Hazard. No gain on Campbell the on the carry that time. I think so. I'm like you, Chuck. I believe the He's got about six inches in height over Adam, so it's easy to tell the two of them apart. He's number five. Get him down here to the end of the first quarter, 345 to go in the opening quarter, no score. Ball, third and this time the back split and Campbell uh, flanked out here on the near side in a flanker position, Olinger back in the shotgun. He's back to pass, a little quick pass, and it's tipped and almost picked off. Pikeville had two defenders over there. Pass well covered and incomplete. That brings up fourth down for the Hasher got by with one right there. I thought mm -hmm. that was going to be picked. The ball on the they had two defenders with, uh, between the quarterback and the receiver, but uh, Hazard was able to escape. Now it's going to be a punny situation here. Timeout on the field. Okay, okay, now they've got out. the ball spotted. Yep. Soared back for Pikeville, but uh, well, now he's drifting back even further. Didn't that's... think he was back far enough to receive that punt, Kevin. Now he's decided to hang out right around the 10-yard line. Let's see who this is putting for Hazard. And he's going to angle it away from Sword, and it's going to bounce into the end zone. So Pikeville will get the touch back and start on their own 20-yard line. The end zone, it'll be brought out to the 20, where it will be the Panthers' ball, first and 10 from their own 20. It's Austin Delpot, the kicker for Hazard, number 27. He's just a ninth grader, just a freshman, so Hazard got a lot of youngsters. Contributing on this roster kind of reminds you of uh, UK a little bit with all the freshmen and sophomores they've got playing. In the bank parking lot, 922 AVX needs to be moved. We'll make sure we recognize all these young men. Now, Pipe will take over here. Still no score in this opening quarter. Pipe will got a man in motion. That is Ted Honaker. Harmon, the ball carrier. Harmon breaks the tackle, breaks another one, gets outside to the 27-yard line. By Daniel Harmon out to the 28-yard line. Pick, Pick up, up a, on the play. Where'd they spot that? The 20. Uh, spotted between the 27 and 28. We'll give him eight. That's a good first down run for Pikeville. They've got eight yards. That so gives them a lot of options on second and third down. More of a traditional set as Honaker up under center this time gives off the second man. That is his brother, and he's to the outside, and they're not going to catch him unless Campbell can run him down. He's down to the 25, 20, inside the 20, and finally taken out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. Honaker down to about the 12-yard line of Hazard, where the Panthers will have 41 yards, Chuck. And 10 Ted Honaker in the 12-yard line. Honeaker picked up 521 yards during the regular season. He was the second leading ball carrier. Uh, Daniel Harmon had a great season. 1,456 yards rushing on the year. First and, 10 and Harmon also a pretty good pass catcher as well. 13 catches for 184. 61 yards on that carry, my bad. 
So five will win. First and 10 from the 12. Give off to Harmon. No, Honaker on the keep. And he gets stood up at the 10 and driven back. Ball carried by. And we got a flag down late. After the play, man, some extracurricular activities or words down there. I believe that was Camel in there saying a couple of things and actually <coughs> cost his team a very good defensive play. Well, put the ball half a distance to go and give Pipewell first and goal the after a good defensive stop. You know, youthful enthusiasm maybe gone a little bit wrong that time. Uh, made a good play on Honaker, but what happened afterwards really cost him. Yeah, and the uh, ball placed on the five yard line. <laughs> I guess it'll be first and five, but I mean, you, you basically. First and goal for the Panthers. They can still get a first down. And Stag's the only wide out split to the near side of the field. Baxson and I. Honaker give off to Harmon. He's tripped up and tackled right there at the five. Gets inside the five. Let's see where they ball spot the ball. Harmon. No gain on the Just play. They're going to mark it right at the five. Yard line. Got a foot, foot or so. We'll give him one. He uh, got hit back around the six or the seven and kind of just will. fell forward and rolled uh, rolled inside the five, but they marked it right around the five. <coughs> one twenty-five to go here in the first quarter. Still no score. His pipe will threaten now. Second down and goal. Honaker to Harmon. Harmon spinning, digging down Harman to about the two. The for the Panthers. Exactly. Maybe inside the, the two, yeah. yeah. Close to the goal line. They're going to mark it on the ball one. On the one yard line. Daniel Harmon, 24 yards here in the first and goal for quarter. the Panthers. The ball on the one yard line. Well, Pikeville had the ball originally at the 12, so I guess if they got inside the two, they could get a first down. So that makes it awful tough on Hazard. And we got somebody jumping before the snap, it looked like, but no flag down. Touchdown, Pikeville. Tim Honecker took it in. Touchdown, I tell you, whenever they he called hike, somebody fired off that ball about a half a second ahead of everybody Touchdown else and helped Tim open that Honecker. hole. No flag, so it was a good play. So Honecker punches it in here with 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. Now Max Mafunda will line up to kick the extra point. To attempt the extra point for the Panthers. Kick is up and good. So with 55 seconds left in the first quarter of play, we finally got a score. Pikeville on the scoreboard first as they lead Hazard 7 to nothing. We'll be back after this timeout on Intermountain Sports. Welcome back. 55 seconds remain here in the opening quarter of play. Pikeville scoring first uh, toward the end of the quarter there on a short touchdown run. Max Bufunda got it teed up and ready to kick off back deep for Hazard. Let's see if we can pick his number up. It's Bufunda to kick for the awful Panthers. tough. I believe it might be Hoskins. Or it might be Campbell back there right Campbell's now. back here on the near side as one of the upbacks. Ball goes out of bounds out around of the 11-yard uh, line. So yard Hazard line. can get it spotted up the field. And Hazard will take the ball at the 35-yard line. 35-yard line is where they will take it. Where about ready to start their ball first offensive in possession. From their own 35 yard line. 55 seconds to go here in this first quarter, Chuck. Uh, probably time for a couple of plays. Olinger's got three wide outs, two to the far side, one to the near side, gives off to Campbell. Campbell cuts through one gap and gets about three yards, maybe Adams four. the ball for Hazard. Out to about the 38 yard line. I think the fellow downstairs has given up on trying to read the seven. numbers. He just calls Adam's <laughs> number every time, doesn't he? We got that one right. Didn't he? I thought the big boy carried that one. I thought it was Adams. <laughs> one. 
Second and seven, give off, and uh, that's Campbell that time, he got maybe to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. Good surge by Pikeville. Hazard's going to have to uh, complete some short passes, maybe open up this running game a little bit. They're trying to run up the middle, and Pikeville pretty well ready for that. Yeah, the, there's the end of the first quarter. Uh, That's the end of the first quarter. So with that, we'll go ahead and take the a score, break here with Pike the Bill score. Seven. Pikeville 7, Hazard 0 on your Intermountain Sports. Welcome back. Start of the second quarter, 7 and nothing. Uh, Hazard trailing. Nice pass from Olinger to Campbell over the middle to the 45. Inside the 40, there's two or three flags down, and he finally goes down at the 29 of Pikeville. Three flags down between the 40 and the 47, though, so there's... We're going to find out uh, what it's all about. Uh, Hazard claims that the flag is on Pikeville. We'll find out here in a minute. Maybe a face mask or something like that. Yes, it is. Against Pikeville. Holding the face mask, the charge against the Panthers. So the play covered, Chuck, uh, 32 yards. The ball will be moved. They're 42 to yards now. There's an extra 15 tacked on to it. So uh, where Hazard will have the ball. Hazard's going to have great field position here. From the Pikeville 15. Now this is an opportunity for Hazard to take advantage of a nice run by Campbell and an error by Pikeville on the penalty. They've got the ball in the red zone. They need to do something here. They trail seven to nothing, and this could really boost their momentum and their morale if they could get this touchdown. Give off to Adams and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard to the 15. The markers look like it's right about the 16 and he got to the 15 so he may have gotten a half a yard. We'll give him Mr. Adams one. Ball placed down on the I don't think we're allowed to give hands. True. <laughs> it will be second and 10. Makes it too hard when you're trying to do up the uh, yards and the average there at halftime. <laughs> well, he got a third of a yard on that one and a half on that one. <laughs> Olinger pitch back to Adams. Adams to the far side, gets inside the 15 and goes down right around the 12. Gain of a couple. Out to about the we'll give him three. They've got it marked down there line. about the 12. Adams with 18 yards, and of course Campbell leading the rushing for Hazard with Third 58. and seven here for in Hazard. Second quarter is Pike will was able to punch one in there, Chuck, right at the end of the first quarter, and jump out to a 7-0 lead after a surprisingly tough uh, first quarter. Both teams of offensively. Yeah, neither team. Uh, clicking on all cylinders both defenses playing well and a nice little move there by Adams he gets inside the 10 looked like he might have been going further but then he got knocked back right around the eight yard line they're going to spot the ball at the nine all carried by Adams <clears throat> inside the 10 yard line fourth down and looks like about It'll Three, four. maybe four from here. And about four for the Hazard Bulldogs. Makes you wonder if this is four down territory. Hazard not going for a kick, anything like that. They're going for it here on fourth down. They've got several wideouts. Olinger with time gets the pass off and into the end zone for the touchdown. Let's see if we can get and that young man, Campbell. Man's Touchdown Number five on the reception and Hazard on the scoreboard, seven to six with the point after try coming up. Four-yard touchdown pass, Olinger to Campbell to now Hazard's. Uh, Looks like. Uh, Delpont going to kick number 27 with Hoskins Delpont to hold. To attempt the extra point. Boy, I tell you what, he took too long. The kick the snap the got there, but he waited too long to swing the leg, and Pikeville had the uh, rush unit in there, and the kick is blocked. 9.27 remains in the second quarter. Pikeville 7, Hazard 6. We'll be back with the Hazard kickoff after this break on Intermountain Sports. See our good buddy Perry Jones from over Wheelwright Way attending the ball game tonight. Uh, Perry always treats us wonderfully when we go down there and cover the South Floyd football and basketball games and has over the years. And 
Uh, Hedden Perry, uh, didn't you tell me he'd been to over 40, I guess, uh, state basketball tournaments in the over the years? Yeah, I think it's 40, well over 45 consecutive straight. So, uh, yeah, Perry Jones has uh, been great for athletics in eastern Kentucky, not just over at South Floor, but all through the mountains of eastern Kentucky. You see him out and around just about everywhere. He enjoys, uh, the, enjoys these kids and enjoys high school sports, that's for sure. We're about set to kick off here. Hazard to uh, trailing two, seven to six four. now with nine Hazard. twenty-seven to go here in the first quarter, first half. Harmon and Sword deep for Pikeville. Harmon and Sword, and they shift, and we've got off a whistle. Uh, There's a flag off on sides the Hazard there on the kicking team. So I guess they'll back them up. Well, they five. were too quick on the kickoff. They need to be a little quicker on the point <laughs> after. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those, uh, what is it, three or four step drop putters, you know. Uh, you need to get that kick off quick when you got people coming in on you. They remembered it on the kick off. Yeah. Just not to kick coverage. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, Hazard uh, was able to, after Campbell's big run, the Chuck was able to punch to that one in. And, uh, they thought to had a chance to tie it up here, but they had trouble with the extra point. But uh, make that the 35-yard line. Anyway, it's Hazard will be kicking from the A lot closer ball 45. game right now than it was the last time Hazard came in here and played this uh, Pikeville the team, and uh, I'm sure the coaches at Hazard's got to be uh, really pleased right now. But I'm sure the coaches on, on Pikeville, the flip side, probably a little bit more concerned, wondering about the focus of the kids. Yeah, you hear a lot of pros and also a lot of cons about the way the district playoffs are you know, shape up this year with a lot of the teams, you know, playing each other once again after already meeting each the other in the regular season. The yeah. ball to the 41 yard line. <coughs> Watson Ritchie picked that it up, short kick up and, and returned it for the Pible. Panthers from their own They'll start here yard with line. the ball on the 41 is 918 to go. And then, yeah, there has been a lot of discussion, like you said, Chuck, or just now about the playing each other especially you know like cuts down on some of the travel I guess because yeah. I know over the years we've you know had South Floyd going down to Lynn camp or going over to Middlesboro or Phelps going to Middlesboro or you know Pikeville going to Somerset and things like that and yeah. when they're playing their district uh, rivals uh, I would think they'd probably have a little bit more in the way of crowds and more interest because it's teams that they're natural rivals with and that they play on a regular basis. Daniel Harmon. Flag down. Harmon on the carry. Not much. Harmon with the carry for yeah. the Panthers. There's a flag on the play. Going to be against Pikeville. And uh, like you said, Chuck, it does help on travel. And and I'm thinking, well, it's motion against Pikeville. Procedure. I'm thinking, you know, we had a lot of teams that played late in the year. Mm -hmm. And they are playing in the playoffs. So maybe once the teams and the coaches and the athletic directors get a feel for these new playoff system they can do some rescheduling and schedule these teams maybe earlier in the year mm -hmm. the versus late in the year that way you don't have to play I know Belfry first uh, and 15 ended up having to play Shelton Clark, Clark on back-to-back -back weeks and uh, actually Pikeville played Jenkins and Hazard late in the year and they're playing them both again here so but anyway uh, first and 15 now for Pikeville and here's flag another down flag. again Ted on Honecker. anchor and he gets out to about the 43 okay, before he goes out of bounds. But we're going to see what the flag's the on. It may be on Pikeville again. Illegal it shift, is, I think. It is against Pikeville. Yep. You know, Chuck, you look up here at the swimming pool in the fence, they got the word focus printed out in cups. And, you know, Pikeville probably may be just a little bit overconfident after, like we said, uh, disposing of Hazard pretty good here just a few weeks ago because they're not showing it. They're not playing nowhere near like they did last weekend. That's always the danger, you know, when you've beaten a team before and beaten them soundly uh, like uh, Pikeville did to Hazard earlier. It's a little harder to get up uh, for the game uh, when you're playing a team, say, like Lynn Camp or Somerset that you hadn't played in a year, year and a half, two years, maybe three years. Uh, it might be a little bit easier for them to, you know, get up for the challenge. Pike will now first and 20, balls all the way back on the 31. Here's Harmon. Harmon out to the 39. The Pick up Panthers. about a seven or eight on the carry. They now need to get all the way inside Hazard territory to the Hazard line. 48 to get a first down. So nice run by Harmon, but they still have 13 Second yards to go. Seven on the carry, and like I said, it's still 13. And uh, like
like to, well, we would like to remind everyone, but we're not on the air tonight. We're just TV only, so. I'm going to tell everyone that we had a crew over at Belfry, but by the time they know that, it'll be over. <laughs> yep, but they can see it on uh, Intermountain Sports on, uh, on the TV cable. Yep. And if they want copies, they can call down there and uh, talk to Brooke. I think that's 478 uh, 4200 four, if you want uh, DVD uh, copies or uh, video copies of these football games. Five yard penalty. I know a lot of the parents and grandparents like to save some of these playoff games or some big games that their you know, kids and relatives and grandkids have had. Coach Jackson's going on a copy of this Long tape, so he's show his, his team right line. now. They've had three or four flags here, Chuck. Just in the last four or five snaps, and uh, about 18 for the That's Panthers. just a lack of concentration, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. so we're down to eight minutes to go here. Yeah, and, uh, Harmon gave him a somewhat doable second down with a nice run, and they added five more yards onto it with the penalty. Pass by Honecker intended for Watson Ritchie, incomplete. Just missed that one there. Yeah, we'll bring up third down. Yeah, Richie was open up about the 43, 44 yard line, cutting across the middle, and he overshot him just a hair. Tim, o Tim Honecker, 0 for 2 in the passing category. Had a nice weekend, a nice night last week uh, passing. Uh, had a few yards and a nice long touchdown throw to his brother, 35 yard touchdown pass. Third and 18, big defensive down, and oh, Pikeville going to quick kick on third down. Ball goes inside the 25 and bounds down and going to roll dead right around the 11. Well, it makes it to the 10. Quick kick by Pikeville, the ball it was pretty slick. On the 10 yard it's only line. third down, so I guess. 57 uh, yard kick, it will be. Well, down, 57 yard. They're kick. gonna play a field position Hazard, game. They figured yeah. they weren't gonna make that first down, so let's pin Hazard down deep and surprise them with that quick kick. And deep. Hazard now with 90 yards to go. Defense have been playing great, and like you said, Chuck, that pins them all the way down inside the 10 or in, down. I guess I tried at the 10. May I have so, your attention, uh, please? The shooting of fireworks at a gathering such as this is illegal, <laughs> and anyone. Shooting fireworks will be it's first and ten out. for Hazard on the ten. They pitch back to is that Campbell or Adams? I think that's Adams. Yep, a little scat back, and he gets out to the twelve. A couple on the carry there. By Adams, pick up with about two on the play. It'll be second. Hazard's and got some good-sized guys on the offensive line, but. Doesn't look like the blockers are quick enough to get out on the outside to seal off the Panther defenders. Pikeville's defense uh, reacting quickly to the ball, and Adams, every time he's tried to turn the corner, has not had a whole lot of room. Here's Oling, or Is that Campbell or Olinger keep that one? Adams, 24 Olingers over here. Okay. Adams with the carry out to the 15-yard line. line. It'll be third and five for Hazard from their own 15-yard line. Third and five, big third down play for Hazard. They don't want to have to kick from here because Pikeville will end up with great field position. Olinger up under center, backs in an eye. He drops back three steps to pass. Pass complete to Hoskins right at the 20. Hoskins got to the 20 on the catch and then was driven back as he tried to uh, get out of the grasp of the defender and fight for more yardage. And they're going to mark it short of the 20, well, just they, a hair. They mark it out. Fourth and less than a yard, it looks like. It will be fourth and one for the Bulldogs. I thought there for a second, Chuck, he was able, was able to pick up the first down. but He was right there on the line and looked like he tried to loop around or get away from the defender and step backwards and got dropped. Like Hazard will kick it away, sword back. <clears throat> sword standing in the Hazard side of the field at the Hazard 45 waiting on this kick. 
Pretty decent kick by the Bulldogs. It goes all the way past the midfield. Stripe bounces inside the 40. Uh, Sword lets it go, and it's going to roll dead all the way down to the 28-yard line. So pretty nice kick. 30, 52 yarders. We've seen back-to-back 50-yard -back kicks. 27-yard so line. Kicking game's good tonight. Really thought that four-yard Hazard uh, would by end up giving block. Pikeville some great field position there, but that punt uh, proved me wrong and. Pikeville will start at their yeah, own 27-28 uh, yard line right in between line. those. It will be Pikeville's ball first and 10 from their own 27. We've got a quick moving first half here, Chuck. And uh, it's 5.20 to go in the opening half, and it's 7-6 to six as Pikeville continues to lead to only by one. Oh. Give off is going to go to Harmon. Harmon, Harmon, I think, Harmon on that carry. Yeah, carry. not much. No also gain. About a yard on the play. Looked like they had a lineman shifting yeah, down the line there to become an extra blocker. Uh, he probably runner. checked Thank in as a tight end because he slid on down the line to provide blocking on that side. But Hazard read the play well, and the extra blocker didn't help much. I believe it was Casey Road number 72 that, like you said, was yeah. shifting down to give some extra blocking, but. Uh, no good on that play. Got him kind of set in a slot back there on the uh, right hand side of the quarterback, kind of like a fullback type. Harmon the ball Harmon, and we got a flag down. May have had a the reach of the flag face the mask, play. and the hazard player over there says no. He had the shoulder pad, and referee says no. I disagree. Hartman picked up only about three on the carry, but uh, the first face mask is going to give them enough for a first down, I'm sure, because it's, I don't know if it's only a five-yard version, it'd still be. They're waving it off. Waving off the flag. No flag on the play. So that's going to bring up uh, the third down now. Yeah, it's going to be third and 11. Well, Hazard did a good job pleading their case there. He said, oh, he had his hand inside the, the shoulder pad, not the helmet. Well, you know, the officials got together, Chuck, and if, yeah. we, I couldn't see it. I didn't either, uh, you Maybe know. Maybe Dawn might be because he's focused in aware, but uh, if it wasn't a face mask, it's a good call. Yeah. Yeah, you want to get it right, whether, you know, it's a penalty or not. We don't have the luxury of replay booths and stuff, but uh, they did have a conference, and maybe somebody seen something that had a better view of it. Herman in motion, Honecker back to pass. Now he rolls out to the near side. He's going to keep the football, and he goes down right at the 30. Got a yard, and it's going to be fourth down. Pikel going to have to kick it away. Tackle down at about the 30-yard line. So Hazard has come to play tonight. Uh, Pikel not rolling up any big score, at least in the first half. No, they haven't, and, uh, and I'd almost venture to guess Chuck would. Probably pretty close to even. Maybe Hazard might be a little bit ahead in the. There's not been many yards Elliot on either side of the ball, but uh, Hazard may the be a leading it uh, as far as total yardage. Like Elliott to kick for Pikeville. Nice kick, high kick, comes down at the 30. Hoskins going to let it bounce, and it's going to go inside the 20 all the way down to about the 16. And we got a flag down. I think a Pikeville player who was. Just trotting down the field, watching the football roll, got hit by a uh, Pike, uh, uh, excuse me, I'll get it right here in a second, a hazard player down here, right around the 25 yard line. May have had a illegal block or a personal foul away from the football. 52 yards on the Now the referee gets ran over. <laughs> well, another 52 yard punt coming back the other way. Tell you what, Chuck, for the penalty is against Hazard. For uh, high school football, this is about as good a kicking game as I've seen in a long time. That was just a stupid play there. Neither one of those players were actually involved in the play. Uh, Hoskins was going to let the ball roll, had no intention of picking it up and running for, with it. And one of the players out on the wing from their own Wasn't paying attention and kind of run up in, into a pikeful player. I don't know even if it was intentional or not, but a flag came down. Anyway, it's first and ten for Hazard now. Campbell, the ball carrier, looks like. 
pick up a little about two. That was the Bulldogs out to about the 12 yard line. So give it to Adams again. I thought it was Campbell. Only picked up two. We're under three minutes to go here in the first quarter, or first half. Hazard trailing six to seven here at Pikeville. The ball on the 13. It'll be third and seven. Little misdirection play, but it doesn't fool the Panther defense. They're right there, and there was no blockers at all out there for the Hazard uh, back. I think that was Hoskins. I believe it was. Pick up with about if I'm number three, play, it'll be Colby Hoskins. And five for the Bulldogs. Ball on the I knew it wasn't third down last line. play. I said, well, they've only run one play. Now we've got third down and five, the ball at the 15. And they get it up to the 20. Should be enough for a first down. With the carry out past the 20 yard line. No linger kept that one and that will give a needed five, got six. From the 20 yard line. So under two minutes to go now, Chuck, and Hazard uh, picks up a big first down, and I'm sure they'll be happy if they can just run out the clock and get to the locker room yeah. for seven to six. Yeah, I think they're going to just uh, play it conservatively here and uh, right see on. what they can do and keep the ball out of Pikeville's hands and go in happy to the locker room in a game that they should be tied in. Pick up of about three Adams on the play. Adams, Adams up to about the 25. to the 26-yard line. They'll spot him just outside the 25. Now closer to the 26. Second down and five. Yeah, we, we had quite a few people trickle in after we came in, Kevin. The stands are full on this side. Got a nice crowd out here on a beautiful night for football. Ball carrier, was that Campbell or Adam, Adams, Adams again? Adams again, yeah. I don't see Campbell out there or, uh, unless it's no. big number five way over on. The no, he's line. not out there right now. Pick up of about four more. It brings up third and one. Adams, 39 yards rushing here in the first half. Probably going to be the last play of the first half unless the, uh, they get the first down and the clock stops on the movement of the chains. 37 seconds and counting. Third and one, straight up the middle. Olinger goes. Looks like he may Olinger have enough. The keeper. Picked up enough the for the first, and I'm line. sure they'll probably just snap it and, like I said, be happy to go to the locker room. Uh, only down uh, seven to six. And, like First I said, it down. should be a tie ball game. Yep, clock stopped where they look to mark the football. It is a first down, 32 seconds left. Now the clock begins to run again. Hazard may have to get off one more play and then be it. And this time Oling are going to look to pass. That's kind of an unusual thing and throws it up for grabs. Uh, had a receiver down there, but also a couple of defenders back there as well. And uh, that stops the clock with 11.8 seconds left. I guess they decided to take a change there. And, you know, yeah, kind of pick up a 15, 20 extra, 30 yards. And kind of surprised me a little bit. I thought they were just going to run the clock on down, but they figured once they got down to around 10, 12 seconds, that they'd throw a couple of passes. And if they miss them, I guess that Pikeville won't have any time to do anything, but you could always get one picked off too. And that's what I'm worried Shot about is Olinger's thrown into double coverage a couple of times and that one overthrown incomplete. incomplete. Closest man to it was number three Third for Pikeville, down, Houston uh, McAnallen. Olinger two out of six for only eight yards, but of course the one big one Chuck was the touchdown pass to Campbell down here in the second quarter. Both these quarterbacks can throw a little bit, but uh, neither one of them what you'd call the second coming of uh, Peyton or Eli, that's for sure. <laughs> they don't throw a lot. Basically, option quarterbacks, I guess, is what we would call them. 
Keeping his O-linger. O-linger on the it. keeper, yeah. Had some running room, gets all the way down to the 40. Yeah, breaks some tackles at midfield. Sword uh, fights his blocker off and makes the stop there along with number two, Honeaker. Into Pikeville territory. The Looked like Olinger was stopped way up here before midfield, and he broke through, got some extra yardage. But in getting that extra yardage, the clock has run down, and we are at halftime with the score. Pikeville 7, Hazard 6. We'll be back to talk about this first half and get you set for the second half after this timeout on Intermountain Sports. Start off this second half. Uh, that three minutes went by awful quick, Kevin. There was still a minute and a half left on the clock, and bang, it went to 12 minutes, and they're ready to kick off. I thought we were going to have a few seconds for stats. I'll let you talk for a minute here, though. Oh, well, we'll just get them here as uh, some we'll dead balls and, <coughs> and possession change. Max Profunda set the kick off here for Pieville as Hazard played a very good first half for Chuck and only trailing seven to six. Profunda puts the foot into it this time. He's going back to the deep man. Uh, Try to get his number, and he had a big hole there, and he misses a, a missed tackle by Pikeville, and he gets all the way inside the Pikeville uh, side of the field at the, about the 45-yard line. Great little run back there by Hazard to start this second half. Return to the 46-yard line of Pikeville. Good return there. And sets up a great field position here for Pikeville or Hazard to start this second half. Some scores to pass along, Chuck. Uh, Prestonburg Belfry is only 14 to 7 over at halftime. Mm -hmm. Johnson Central and Ashland tied up in a big class 3A matchup. I think Leslie uh, County and Middlesboro were tied up at halftime as well. Yes, they were. That's number 32 that time of uh, Austin Blanton, a freshman. Austin Blanton, that's the first time he touched it tonight, I believe. What did he pick up on there? Pick up 10, didn't he? They've got a lot of freshmen and sophomores in the lineup. Let's see number 23, Meehan, one of the wide receivers, just a freshman as well. Picked up 12 on that carry. There's a good defensive stand by yeah. number 90 and 72, Casey Rowe. And number 90 there is, he's got a 90 on the pipe over there. All carried by Blanton. No, I'm going to have to go into my secondary roster sheet here. All I've got a is up to 85. Will be second and 12. You know, Casey Rowe was in there, and I believe it was number 90. I'm like, you only go up to 85 on mine. But, uh, anyway, a uh, good defensive stop. Clock uh, continues to tick. I guess that's Jordan Johnson, number 80, uh, coming in on that pass rush. They get the pass out to Hoskins. He gets inside the 35, picked up. Uh, Maybe three yards from the line of scrimmage there. Tackle down at the 34 yard line. Pickup of about four. It will be third and 10. Hoskins two catches for eight yards. <coughs> Olinger three out of seven in the ball game for only 12 yards. Not much passing. Everything's been on the ground for both teams. Olinger back. Semi shotgun type formation there. Dumps a little pass to me in the freshman we just mentioned. He's inside the 30 to about the 27. So, what we mentioned earlier, uh, uh, me and uh, Joey Meehan, number 23, uh, gets his first reception of the night. But uh, what we were saying in the first half, uh, Hazard maybe uh, ought to start dumping some little short passes to open up the running lanes a little bit, and uh, they've come out here in the second half trying to do just that. Fourth down and three, Olinger on a keeper. He goes straight up the middle, breaks some tackles, still on his feet fighting for yardage down to about the 21-yard line. First down hazard. That all came on the heart and legs of Olinger there. Tyler Olinger, I was getting ready to say Ashley, he's gone and Durrell are gone. I tell you what, we've covered football around here so many years. Uh, it won't be long before the uh, sons of some of the players we covered starting out will be uh, on the field. Picked up six yards on that, Chuck, and uh, all on hard running. Picked up a big first down here for Hazard. <clears throat> they continue to move the chains down here to, with the Looking to take the lead. Little swing pass goes out to Adams. Adams uh, tackled right at the 20-yard line. Picked up a couple. 
Olinger's starting to heat up a little bit back there in the backfield. Of course, tomorrow is officially uh, Veterans Day. I know some folks uh, like myself had today off. Some other folks like the post office will be off Monday and uh, some of the banks and other offices that are open on Saturday will be closed tomorrow. But that's not what it's really all about. It's a day set aside to honor all the veterans uh, who served this country and uh, many of whom who were injured or gave their lives in the defense of freedom. Yes, it is, and that was uh, 24, the ball carrier there. Adams, no game. And you're right, Chuck, it's uh, to honor those people that, uh, that went out and okay, gave, us, gave us the freedom of, you mm -hmm. know, gave us what we're doing tonight and every day we wake up and yeah, I think if you see someone this weekend, it's time to tell them thanks. Yeah, I remember as a kid, my mom telling me about her brothers uh, that served in World War II. She had a brother that was killed in Europe and another one that was badly injured uh, in the Pacific. And my dad fought in North Africa, so I've got some some uh, fumble by Hazard there. That really wasn't a forced fumble. He just kind of lost it going down, and Pikeville picked it up. Jacob Sword, and he brings it all the way back up to the 40-yard line. So Hazard looking good on offense and just coughed it up there all of a sudden. Uh, Kevin and Pikeville takes advantage of it. Yeah, he broke loose, and uh, I think someone just come from behind and was able to punch it loose. And Sword picked it up and uh, bring it all the way back out to the 35 for Pikeville. And uh, and I tell you, the way the Hazard was moving the ball, that defense was on its uh, on its uh, heels, Chuck. And uh, all of a sudden, the big turnover here now, and to give them a chance to come sideline, catch your breath, and give this offense some time now. They took five, almost five minutes off the clock on that drive. A little motion in the backfield there as Honeaker splits out. Give off to Harmon. Honeaker on that side helping to block, but no uh, running room at all as Harmon stacked right up. Pikeville's throwing some extra blockers on that side of the field uh, on the couple of times they've run that play, Kevin, but Hazard's uh, read it real well, and the extra blockers haven't helped a bit. No, they haven't. I mean, uh, Casey Rose been out there, like you said, uh, maybe putting some extra bodies over there, but Hazard's been able to defend them off and uh, find the ball and get to the ball carry without any big, big gains. So it's second and 10 now as the ball's still on the 35. Harmon in motion steps out in the slot to the far side. They come to the near side with uh, Honaker on the play. Teddy Honaker, and he's not going to get any yardage at all. May have lost one. You may have, Chuck. And uh, I know in the first half, Pablo uh, Tim Honaker, four yards rushing. Daniel Harmon, 34 yards rushing. And Ted Honaker, 61. But Ted Honaker got all his on one carry. And uh, that was it for the offense for the Pikeville Panthers in the first half, Chuck. Number 11, a, another sophomore in the starting lineup for Hazard, T.J. Searcy on the tackle there for the Bulldogs. Coming out here on the near side, number 33 is Wesley Hook, uh, three wide outs on the far side. Tyson situation. Honaker here. in the shotgun, one back alongside of him. 0 for 2 tonight in passing category. Honaker rolls out to the far side of the field, looking to set up to pass, and he's got no time, and he's going to go down, and he's going to lose a yard. It'll be fourth down Pikeville. A terrible offensive possession that time. Pikeville lost yardage. Defense was able to get the ball and uh, give them great field position to start, but uh, when you look at it after the three snaps, Chuck, they ended up losing three yards. I think Pikeville may end up having to uh, do a little bit about uh, like what we talked about Hazard doing, uh, maybe some short passes. Uh, Hazard stacking up the, the line of scrimmage and Pikeville not running very effectively right now. Well, we get to see the best part of the game we've seen tonight on both sides of the kicking game. Once Clay again. Elliott with another punt rolls down to about the 20, I think, is where they'll spot it, somewhere right in there. Ball down to about the 20. Houston McGalling. Down the ball the there. Bulldogs ball. Yeah, I'd say First overall, these are probably the two best putters I've seen uh, in one line. game all season long. Oh, it's been a great kicking game tonight. Some probably. of the. Uh, kicking games we've seen it take three punts to make 52 yards in on some of these games and we've had several 50 yarders here tonight in just this one field these guys are averaging probably 45 yards a kick 
So Hazard take over here, six or five twenty-seven to go in the third quarter. As they trail pipe will seven to six, first and ten, the ball's on the twenty-two. Olinger back, another little swing pass outside to Hoskins. Hoskins gets out to about the 27 before he goes down. Hazard using the pass kind of like a run here in the second half. Let me pick up four. Pick up of about four. I think so, yep. Yeah. Little short passes that. Uh, Hoskins three catches from 12, 12 yards. Olinger now, I got him. Seven out of six out of 12, six out of 10 for 23 yards. Holding her back to pass under some pressure, steps up, pops. He's going to go deeper this time, looking for a man. He's got a man all oh, wide open, and he couldn't hold on to it. Pass incomplete. Well, that ball hung up and gave the receiver plenty of time to just run right under it, and he couldn't hold on to it. Adams uh, had a hand on it. Get the number that the pass was intended for. Yeah, Adams, number 24. Oh, was that Adams? Okay. You're right. He just uh, ran, was able to run under it, but wasn't able to bring it in and uh, kind of T-O'd it, I guess you could say. Yeah. <laughs> Olinger back to pass once again, gets some pressure, a little pass up over the middle. There's Campbell who's back into the lineup and he's showing his strength as he carries about three defenders an extra couple of yards before he goes down about the 45. I'm gonna mark it at the 44. Gonna be enough for the first down for the Bulldogs. Pick up of 18 on the play, so. <coughs> Campbell two catches, 23 Campbell yards. The ball to the 44 yard line. Ball Tell you what, if Hazard can keep all these kids together, they've got a ton of freshmen and sophomores playing significant time in a lot of the skill positions. By the time they're juniors or seniors, Hazard's going to be a team to really be reckoned with. Flag down as the play gets underway. Olinger on the keeper gets a couple of yards inside the 45, and the flag's going to go against Hazard. It's an illegal shift or illegal formation, and that'll back them up five. Kind of knew that was coming because as soon as the ball was snapped, the flag came flying out. 422 to go here in the third quarter. Hazard. Five yard penalty against. Had Hazard. the ball for the majority of this quarter, Brings Chuck. Up. And uh, they still Again, continue to trail by that and one and that extra point mm -hmm. that uh, they wasn't able to uh, complete the first quarter. Our first half is really starting to loom big now, isn't it? Sure is. I tell you, they would be heartbroken if that's what it came down to. Olinger rolling out, looking for somebody to throw to, and nothing there, and he goes down behind the line of scrimmage. Tim Honecker and Casey Rowe in on the <laughs> tackle. Tackle by Honecker and Casey Rowe. And a loss of, what, 10, 11? Second down, 22. Balls on the way back now to the 32. And they're going to have to go all the way to across midfield, all the way into almost to the pike bowl, 46 for a first down. But he's thrown the ball a lot here to start this second half, and I'm sure they're going to continue doing it. Going with four receivers and one back. Give off to the back up the middle. That was Blanton, and he got about two up to the 35, and that's it. Ball brought out to the 35 yard line. <laughs> I tell you what, nowadays you see people running out of the shotgun, running with four wide outs and five wide outs. Uh, with all on the 35 yard line. All kinds of different formations yeah. and spread and everybody. And <clears throat> Some of these teams have gone back to old style offensive setups with the wing T and the that type formation that you saw a lot of a lot of in the 60s. That pass is incomplete, hits the ground before Campbell hauls it in. And it's going to be fourth down. Campbell was open around the Pikeville 45, but that ball a little short, kind of hit the ground uh, as it skipped into his hands. Fourth down and 19. With the ball on the 35 yard line. Sword will be back to return for Pikeville. And forget the young man's new kick here for Hazard. Uh, Austin Delpont. Sword deep for Pikeville. 
And it's blocked. Blocked. They got in there on it that time. Honaker on the block, picks it up, and he's going to take it in for the score. No flags on the field. Tim Honaker. And then maybe that's what the Pineville Panthers needed, Chuck, to get them going. Big defensive play there on special teams. They came in on the punter, and he didn't have any chance that time to get it away, whether he was a slow kicker or a fast kicker. Did no. not have time. Two players, Honaker, and we'll try to get the other young man's name. They both came in on the punter and blocked that one. Blocked it, picked it up, ran in from about the 32, 33 yard line. And, uh, yeah, that ball kind of bounced right back into Honaker's hands. He didn't have to slow down much as he ran it in. Max Pafunda lined up to kick the extra point here to extend this lead to eight. And he does. Looks good, and it's 14 to six with 232 remaining in the third quarter of play. Pikeville scores on a block punt carried back into the end zone for the touchdown. We'll be back with the Panther kickoff after this break on Intermountain Sports. Welcome back, everyone. 2.32 to go here in the third quarter. A big block punt, Chuck. And uh, Pikeville Panthers extend that lead out now 14 to 6. As the Thunder set the kickoff here. Maybe what the Pikeville Panthers needed to get, uh, get awakened on defense and offense here. Funda going to kick it off deep once again. This ball tailing out of bounds, and it's going to go out inside the 10, so they can spot it once again at the 35. No run back. He's marking the ball out right at the one. I mean, just, I mean, you know, one yard, it's a touchback, a great kick. They're going to bring it all the way out to the 35 now for Hazard. They'll start with great field position. Kind of trying to kick away from the middle of the field, and that one curved on him. If, Like you said, if it would have Stayed straighter just a second longer, yeah. it would have been in the end zone. And just rode out right there at the one. I mean, when he went down and marked it, he was standing right at the one. Mark Dixon, Hazard's coach, uh, in his four year record, 31 and 14. So uh, after replacing a uh, longtime coach down there at Hazard, uh, Dixon has done a pretty good job with the program. And that was Olinger on the keep there. Pick up of about three. Yeah, and I was going to say Walter Brew, but he was at Paintsville. I know I was wrong there. I, I tell you what, I'll come up with the uh, Hazard, former Hazard coach's name here uh, before the end of the ball game if my mind can get working. But uh, I know they had a coach that was down there for quite some time, and like Walter Brew was at Paintsville and was very successful. And Dixon, a young guy that took over and has done real well as well. And that one caught but coughed up immediately incomplete as he got popped soon as the football came into his hands by the Pikeville defense. One of the players in there was Houston McAnallen. Number three was the other Pikeville Panther in there. Uh, yeah, okay. Third and seven for that is McAnally. And you're right, Chuck. They popped him pretty good. Olinger, Olinger put the pass where it needed to be. In fact, a couple of his have been on the money tonight. Just they've not held on to him. So now it's going to bring up third and seven here. Olinger dropping back to pass, getting some pressure, gets it to Hoskins, and Hoskins can't hold on. The pass a little bit high as he cut back toward the middle. Olinger now seven out of 15 in the ball game. Olinger trying to get the ball out to some of the wide receivers out on the uh, end or these little swing passes and let them try to create with their athleticism. Uh, they've had a lot of trouble in the middle of the field getting getting the yardage that they've needed, so they're trying to spread it out a little bit with these short passes. A couple of them dropped this series, though. Yep. One of them was uh, dropped for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another good, good hit. kick. Going to get a nice bounce, I tell you, even if the punt doesn't look good, he knows where it's going. That bounce and rolls another 30 yards. Still rolling. It's going to roll all the way down to the 10. So that's uh, another 50-plus kick. Yeah, down. 52 yards. <laughs> right on the money, 12 and 40. Near the 10-yard line. Every time he's kicked, he's, he's had a couple or three 52-yarders. That must be his favorite number. If I was a, a lottery player, I might uh, want to play five and two tomorrow. <laughs> if I saw these college coaches, I'm going to find these kids. And <laughs> yeah, he's just a sophomore. No, a freshman, Delpont, uh, 27, just a freshman. Yeah. Doug on. Got a good leg on him. Good-sized kid, too. Yeah. 
But anyway, the Panthers take over here now, 131 to go in the third quarter. He may be one of these kids, you know, in two or three years that some of these colleges are looking for. He can punt and place kick. And yep. That Harmon, the ball carrier there. Saves you a scholarship if you get a dual purpose kicker. Oh, Tim Honecker kept the ball. Pick up of about four, five. Pick up of five yards. I was always play. disappointed that uh, that great kicker Middlesbrough had about seven, eight years ago, Dusty Wynn, that I think he kicked a 55 yarder in high school and uh, went down to UK and just never did make it grade wise and never did get a chance to kick for the Kentucky, but I was really hoping to get a chance to see that, that leg in a UK uniform. Flag down as Ted Honecker, Ted Honecker gets the football. Looks like in the area of holding Chuck against Pike. Flag on the play, holding against Pike. And it is, yeah. and it's going to back him up now, and the ball's on the 15. I figured it was going to be an offensive penalty. It was thrown right in that line area. Well, it's from the spot of the foul, it's going <clears> to be <throat> half the distance, I guess. And it's going to take them inside the 10, probably somewhere around the 5. So Pikeville needs to get something going here, or Hazard, uh, even if, even with a good punt, is going to get good field position. Yeah, we're down to only 46. They're going to be all the way down to the inside the five. I thought it was just half the distance. I was thinking it'd be around the seven, but here yeah, they're bringing it back out. There we go. Yeah, you were right all along. Hmm. Yeah, we've had some discrepancies with the yards to go and <laughs> different things on the scoreboard tonight, and the announcer down there. He's having trouble with those hazard uh, uniforms too because uh, I think uh, Adams has got about 50 carries and nobody else has any. Adams has been the workhorse tonight. <laughs> 40 seconds remain in this third quarter. Pikeville second and long. The ball spotted right around the nine yard line. <laughs> and we've got movement. Honaker a long count there. That might have been against Hazard. Procedure against Pikeville. Somebody no. jumped and Hazard came flying across, but Pikeville drew him, so they're going to be backed up to the four yard line now, second and 17, with 29 seconds left in the quarter. They wanted to put it down there on the, about the three second or four originally, so they finally got it there, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> There's some big games coming up tomorrow in football, none bigger than the one in Lexington after the big game last night, unfortunately, Louisville. Uh, went down to the hands of a great Rutgers team right now. What a hit. Man, man, I tell you what. Let's get that, get, get that man's number there. I think that was uh, number two, Jared Meehan uh, there on the stop for Hazard. As the quarter ends, Pikeville has third and long. They lead 14 to six over Hazard. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter of play here from Howard Field in Pikeville after this timeout on Intermountain Sports. Welcome back everyone. Fourth quarter action here, this big district championship game. And uh, Chuck, I'll just tell you, it's a little bit closer than I thought it'd be after the way Pipe yeah. exposed them a few weeks ago, but you have to take your hats off to this Hazard team. They came in here and uh, a little banged up and a little beat up, but they've played a really good ball they game. They sure have. They've scrapped hard in this one and uh, they've got to be proud of their efforts right now. Third and 16 now. Tim Honecker hands it off to Teddy. Ted. And he gets stopped around the 14 yard line. So it's going to be fourth down for the Pikeville Panthers. Well, we were talking about Veterans Day with Dr. Don, Kevin. And I guess uh, Don has been busy uh, filming some veterans ceremonies. Uh, yeah, over in the city park in Pikeville, which I drove by uh, that one yesterday and noticed some things going on. Uh, got the Pike County Central Band and Chorus and uh, ceremony to honor the veterans and that'll be on uh, TV5 and Intermountain Cable uh, tomorrow and, and he also made a trip over to Logan West Virginia and we'll talk about that after this punt here Hoskins on the punt return and he gets three or four yards and that's about it but uh, Hazard will have good field position inside Pikeville territory at the Pikeville 43 yard line to start out offensively but anyway get back to the both programs will be on this weekend on uh, WPRG tomorrow, and the other one from over in Logan is a, a replica of the Vietnam Wall with all the names, so that would be something really interesting to see. So uh, if you got time tomorrow, tune in. Like I said, this one over here in the city park, a uh, bunch of local people uh, that we all know, and uh, 
we all got some family, some form or fashion that served. And uh, that's right. I mean, you got so many kids over in Iraq and Afghanistan and serving in, uh, you know, in uh, the Middle East right now. And a lot of us are old enough to have had friends and relatives and brothers and cousins serving Vietnam. And, a lot of veterans in this area, so if you see one tomorrow, uh, tip your hat and say thanks. Olinger, the ball carrier there, pick up of about and two for the Bulldogs. eight. So he's had a good night's nice rushing, Chuck. Got him with 50, 55 yards rushing. Hazard's going to have to try to get some points out of this drive here, and because uh, they trail yeah. eight in this fight with defense. Uh, Pike will not easy to score on, and you know they're in the fourth quarter. They're not going to have too many more chances. So they need to make something happen, like you say, when they get the ball inside Pikeville territory to start. And Adams gets it down to about the 31-yard line on that carry. Looks like he picked up enough for a first down. They only needed a couple, and he got uh, three or so. And Referee now looking, he may call the chain. Yeah, they're going to call it, give it a first down. They were debating a little bit. Now they're going to say he's got enough. Adam's been the workhorse tonight for Hazard. He hasn't carried as many times as the PA announcer has said, but uh, not even with 43 yards, and they've all been tough 43 yards. This type of defense has been, but they haven't broke but just once, giving up to six. Olinger just takes it straight on the shotgun carry there. The quarterback on the keeper inside the 30 to about the 27. Olinger now the leading rusher with 58 yards. Him and Campbell 58 apiece. Greg Adams 43. Blanton a couple of carries there in the third quarter for 14. Hazard, similar to Pikeville on offense, they don't rely on any one player to carry the whole load. Uh, Pikeville using Harmon and Honeaker, and also, you know, they've got a running quarterback. Hazard, Olinger can run, and he's got Campbell and Adams uh, in the backfield with him, and all of them are doing pretty well. But that one, a short gain that time for Adams as he went straight up the middle. Or is that Blanton? That's Blanton, 32 on the carry. Got a yard. Blanton a little a hair shorter and a little stockier than Adams. That's the only way you can really tell them apart. Blanton three carries 15 yards. Nine minutes to go here in the ball game now. Pike will lead in 14 to 6. The winner of this one will play the winner of the Somerset Harlan game. Adams that wow. time and man as he popped. He found a little bit of hole, but the door oh, the door slammed shut quick. Who was that masked man that came through there? I believe that was Ted Honeaker, number five. I got my price of admission right there. He and Tim Honeaker and also Casey Rowe all right there in the middle. And uh, Adams got up ahead of steam and ran right into a brick wall. Now it's going to bring up a fourth and third for Hazard and let's see if they're going to kick or if they're going to go for it here. I wouldn't be surprised we don't see a timeout right here by the coach. Yeah, I, I definitely would not kick. The ball's at the Pikeville 25-yard uh, line. And well, line up in the eye. Campbell, the big back in the backfield. Fake no point in punting the football down this deep. Olinger, Olinger to, it looks like Hoskins, I think it is, over on the sideline for the first down pass inside the 15 out of the 14. About the 15. Big pressure, fourth down completion there by Olinger to the senior, one of the few seniors, Colby Hoskins. Hoskins doing a good job receiving. I've only got him with four catches, 23 yards, but that not a uh, couple of them been a big third down, especially that narrow on the fourth down. Now Olinger has attempted 16 passes. I've got him with eight out of 16. Looks like Campbell there, the big guy, and he goes inside the 10 all the way down to about the eight. Inside the 10 yard line. Campbell not getting the number of carries he had in the first half, but he made that one count. Of course, they've had him lined up and wide out and tied in. He's kind of a versatile, I guess what, like an H-back? Is that what they call him in the pros? I think so. Campbell, 64 yards. I've never figured out exactly what that is. I'm like, they well, is it a tight end? Is it a flanker? Is it a running back? What is an H-back? Rolling back, Olinger gets a nice block. Throws to pass, uh, had a defender kind of over there. Josh Mullins in front of his intended receiver, Hoskins, got a hand on it and knocks it away. Third and four. 
tried to loft it over Mullins, but Hoskins not very big, and Mullins able to shield him from the football. Third and four now. The ball is resting on the eight-yard line. 7-16 to go, 14 to 6, Pipel over Hazard. Olinger in the shotgun, Blanton with him. Blanton blocks and Olinger tries to take it up the middle, cuts to the outside, finds some running room, twist inside and gets all the way down inside the five to about the two yard lines. That should be first and goal for the Bulldogs. Olinger carries the ball for Hazard. There's where that quickness and the ability to kind of cut and turn on a dime uh, helped Oldinger. He was going into the middle and there was nothing at all there, Kevin, and he just bounced it to the outside and found some room. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the Pikeville well defenders was able to get in there and make contact, but he popped out. Anyway, with that, 7.07 .07 to go here in the ball game. We've got a timeout. With that, we'll take a break on your Intermountain Sports Network. Go. First down and goal for the Hazard Bulldogs. 7.07 .07 left in this ball game. Of course, a big, big series for Hazard here. They can uh, get right back in this one and, in fact, tie it with a score and a two-point conversion. Uh, Campbell, I think, on the carry that time, and he didn't get anything. Chuck, I think uh, Dr. Don had the camera on focus there, and uh, yep. I believe this Pikeville Panther defense, especially the second half, has came out a little bit more focused. Yeah. Than, uh, yeah. But, you know, both teams played rather played good ball on, uh, on defense and offense. Uh, like I said, Pipe was 40 to 7 a couple of weeks ago, and Hazard came in here, and they gave them everything they want with a change right now to punch one in a, a two-point conversion and tie it up. And no gain there either. I thought there was Olinger just took the snap and surged forward, and he gets down close to the goal line, did not get in. Give him one, so on the one yard line. It will be third and goal for Hazard. Well, we don't want to jump the gun here, but uh, if Hazard scores, they're going to have to go for two uh, with only six minutes and stuff uh, change left in the ball game. Got an official timeout here. I don't know. Looks like one of the. Probably got a. Ted Honecker's coming out, and number nine is going in for Pikeville. Over he's shaking up, or you know, occasionally these guys will get scratched or get a little blood. Well, have to come out. He's had some trouble with one of his shoulders, and yeah, uh, and he is that uh, right arm's hanging. Yeah. Members, so. but anyway, Jordan Price replaces him, number nine. Yeah, this late in the season, uh, even though these kids are young and in good shape and enthusiastic, you do get banged up. In a game like this, uh, there's been some hard hitting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'd say he's not the only one banged up and sore. Yeah, and they've already played uh, 11 games already. And in. No, no signal. Yeah. Finally. Olinger punches it in from the one. I was trusting uh, Olinger's teammates there. They said he got in, and I was going to go ahead and say, uh, well, as close as he was, he should have made it if he took it straight up. He only had about a half yard to go. Hazard gets within two, 14 to 12 the score, 552 left in this ball game. There have been some great playoff games. Uh, some of the earlier scores we've heard, a lot of close games. So, you know, maybe this playoff format, uh, you know, the second out. week, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a lot of close games, a lot of rivalries. Johnson Central blew out Ashland, and it was tied up. And now this one here, two-point conversion will tie it up. Olinger needs this two-pointer, and they're not going to get it. He's uh, stacked the up. The ball smacked all over the place. So the no, he stepped up into the pass rush that time. I thought he was going to tuck it under and run, uh, Kevin, but he decided he was going to throw, and I don't know how in the world he was going to throw with four defenders all over him. I don't either, but even the defense gives up the touchdown, but they're able to keep him out of the end zone on the two-point conversion here, and, uh, you know, Chuck, that mm -hmm. extra point we talked about during the first half. Looms there it is. very large right now, 14 to 12. The score hazard getting ready to kick off. Uh, to the Pikeville Panthers, and now it's up to the uh, Bulldog defense to, to play as well as they have played most of this ball game and keep Pikeville from answering, and maybe they'll get a, one more shot to, well, at the you, end of the ball game. Do you think it, I know it's early, but you look at the clock, and they haven't had uh, 
Would they try an onside kick? I guess what I'm trying to say is it too early for that, or, uh, or do you, the defense have been playing good? Do you take a change, kick it deep, and try to maybe hold them and uh, get it back? I know. You know. I think I trust the defense and go ahead and kick it with 5:52 left. Now, if there's three minutes left, I might onside it. Of course, watch them do the opposite. I'm always trying to analyze this stuff, but I get it bass backwards most of the time. Well, I'm just thinking they uh they would more than likely not expect it right now as they would if they, you know, yeah true. So. But anyway, it looks like Piper's got some good hands to people up front here anyway. They might be thinking it. Looks like Teague, number 11, going to kick off, or, and he's going to kick a short one right into the hands of number three, McAnallen, for Pikeville. He gets it to the 45 to midfield. Pikeville getting some blocking. we got a flag down right at midfield. Uh, all the way down to about the 32 or three is where he's out. That's coming back. Good run back, but I think Pikeville's going to be charged with a hold or an illegal block on that run back right here around the 45. 23 uh, uh, Mullins there, Pikeville more or less had one of the hazard uh, defenders, and I could see it from here. I knew that one was coming back. Kind of pushing him along out of the way there and uh, may have used a little too much hand there. Got a bulldog down down here, one of the hazard players. Number 33. Hope the young man's not hurt too bad. Michael Campbell, another freshman in the lineup for the Bulldogs. Time out on the field. Tell you with that, uh, sure hope he's just maybe got the breath knocked out of him or something. There he is moving, so. You talk about the big UK game tomorrow against Vanderbilt and Tell you these these guys uh, they've had a lot of adversity a lot of uh, scholarships you know limited from all the fallout after Hal Mummy left and they're finally getting back to a, a full roster but they've got so many young kids and that big win over Georgia now I know it's not a typical Georgia powerhouse team but still a team loaded with highly rated recruits and you know talented players and a good coach you know wasn't no no, no sneeze anyway. Georgia's is still a good football team. And yeah, they're uh, still six and four. I mean, they, you know, they've lost Kentucky uh, with a win tomorrow can get bowl eligible. And I tell you, that's a, a long, long haul from uh, just a couple of years ago. You know, they're making improvement. Yeah, I think uh, talent wise, uh, you know, their backfield and the receivers, Woodson quarterback. So and then on the defensive side of the ball, I know that you know, they took their lumps early in the year, but you know, last three games, mm -hmm. they've, they've played respectable if defense. They're, if they're fairly healthy, that offense moves football pretty well. I yes. mean, Woodson's got a good arm on him and lines and uh, Burton and uh, Tammy give them a good set of receivers and uh, they've got a uh, little depth at running back. Uh, Dixon and who was it? Smith, I guess, yep. came in there after Little got hurt and did a good job. I'll tell you what, this looks like it's going to be a little bit longer, so uh, with this, it's 5.43 to go. It's 14 to 12, Pipe over Hazard. We'll go ahead and take a break here. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, a little bit of delay there. Uh, Chuck, I sure hope that's just precaution there for the young man that they're uh, having to take out here. Uh, hopefully it's just some precautionary things there. I noticed he was moving his legs and arms, so. Uh, but anyway, we gotta get back to football here. I, you know, things like this happen. Uh, just good hard football, clean football, and uh, nothing dirty about it. So 5.43 to go. Pipe will got the ball here Pipe at the 45. The Take it away, Mr. Schofield. On Acre back there and getting ready for the snap as we're ready for live action once again. Harmon kind of shades over to the far side of the field. It's Teddy Honecker on the carry. Cuts back inside and picks up Eight, maybe nine yards on the carry. Nice little run by Honecker there on the first down. 46-yard line of Hazard. <clears throat> second down and one. Pick up of nine by Honecker. For the Panthers. Talking to one of the uh, fathers uh, up here, his daughter, one of the uh, two young ladies uh, that sang the national anthem, talking about the all-state uh, choral competition. I guess the kids from this area went down to Moorhead and uh, had tryouts. We'll finish the story here in just a second. Second and one. Ted Honecker on the carry, and he's still got the football and still on his feet as he fought through and stayed on his feet, broke several tackles, got more than enough for the first down, all the way down to about the 32. 
Yeah. They needed one and got about 14, didn't they? 15, I think, Chuck. We'll give him 15, so. So all the uh, kids from the local region that um, went down for tryouts that made All-State Chorus uh, at Moorhead, uh, they will all get together with their counterparts from across the entire state of Kentucky. And uh, sometime in the early part of 2007, they'll have a big uh, concert in Louisville with uh, some 200 All-State Chorus members and a big symphony. Give off to Harmon. Harmon breaks the tackle, and he's going to go in untouched to the end zone for the touchdown, and that'll put this one away. Hazard down by just two points, gives up a late score here to Pikeville. It makes it 20 to 12 with 4.28 left. There's Harmon, a 30, 31-yard touchdown run. and One of the Hazard players coming up out of the pile, uh, limping a little bit of it. It looks like Bart Teague, number eight. The seer, they call that back, Chuck. There's well, a flag on the play. I didn't see a flag. It must have been. Uh, I still don't see one on the field. Oh, over here it is on the Pikeville sideline. Way over near the Pikeville sideline. I didn't see that one drop. I did not. I was, I was looking right in the middle of the field where the action took place, but something went on over there. Some kind of illegal formation, I think. They had that call about that three That touchdown times. comes back, so. Uh, Hazard breathing a sigh of relief there as uh, they gave up a big play on that one, but it was called back uh, due to a penalty. So no score on that one. Uh, 428 now to go here in the ball game. Still 14 to 12. Honecker up under center in a more traditional stance this time. Backs and an eye. Give off first man through Harmon. No, it wasn't Harmon. Fake me out and. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to pitch it to Rowe there as he was going down. I think the quarterback kept that one. He faked me out. I thought he was given to Harmon again, and Harmon scooted through the line just like on the last play, but this time he didn't have the football. Loss of one there by the quarterback on the play. Second and 16, 37-yard line of Hazard. Pikeville doesn't really have to score here, but sure they'd like to just kind of work the clock down and tack on a score to put this one out a little bit more out of reach is what i was trying to say I'll tell you when you get old it's hard to keep your <laughs> thoughts and uh, everything strung together in a <laughs> in clear form clock continues to run here down to 330 to go in the ball game that Harman when the snap the comes to Harmon directly from the center, he cuts inside, back out to the 25, 20, 15, and down into deep hazard territory as he finally goes down around the 12. A little zigging and zagging by Harmon, causing some tacklers to miss, and he got a nice big gain out of that one, got the first down. 24 yards on the run, Chuck. First down, Mike Hill. Harmon's been kind of quiet, but the last couple times he's touched the football, he's made things happen. I only had him with 34 yards before these last two runs, and of course, uh, had he to should have fairly fresh legs. He's not had a lot of work tonight. Have to take off the 31-yard touchdown run, but he was able to get that 24 to set up first down now, first and 10. The ball's on the 13, down to three minutes to go as the clock becomes an issue for Hazard. As Harmon gets stood up. Of course, you know, Pop will be happy with them just being able to Harmon pound it in there and let the clock continue to run. Yeah, a win's a win. Uh, the points don't count toward anything right now. Well, you can tell that cold front that's supposed to come roaring in here tomorrow and bring cooler weathers and rain is, and is coming. We've got a little wind starting to pick up here as the evening wears on. It was beautiful at... Uh, the start of the game and still very pretty, but the uh, temperature going down and a little breezy now. There's Ted Ho or Tim Honecker, the keeper. He loses some yards. Loss on the play. I'm not going to worry about the bad weather at all, Kevin. I'm going to Florida next weekend. Oh. I'm going to go down and see my dad for Thanksgiving. So I don't want to hear it, Tim. I guess I can put up with whatever comes our way for a few more days. You need 30 degrees so I, you can I appreciate can that 80. <laughs> so you can appreciate You'll that You'll have to come with me, bring your golf clubs. I need to do that. And we're under two minutes to go here now. As you start to wonder how long Hazard man wait before they start using some of them timeouts. Well, third down here. Pikeville needs to get the first or Hazard will There's Harmon. be getting the football back. Harmon fighting down toward the no, five. Actually, they gave it. I got faked out again. They gave it to Ted, Ted Honecker. 
I tell you, uh, there's a timeout now. Tim, Tim does a good job pulling that ball out quick or faking those handoffs. Uh, Hazard does take their first, I think there's their first time out. 140 left on the clock and Pikeville facing a fourth down situation. Kind of wondering here, Pafunda's got a oh, decent leg, but even three points is only going to put you five up, so it really doesn't matter that much. Unless you're just trying to avoid a, a field goal being able to beat you by Hazard, which based on the legs I've seen out here tonight, to Junior high, it's possible. Anybody, anything's possible. For Thanksgiving. I, I didn't mean to Hazard, Hazard's kicker's got a good leg, but the question I come up with is uh, they've been in on him on a point after and also on a punt already tonight. And I'm like you. It'd be interesting to see what Pikeville does here. I think Pikeville will go for it. Congratulations. Because the I don't think the three will. Yeah, the three's not going to do any good because. Uh, Unlike I said, it does keep yeah. you from a field goal beating you, but I'm like you. I don't think Hazard uh, feels that they can maybe get that position. Unless they just got just a chip shot or something. And, yeah. Now that doesn't happen all that often. But anyway, here's a big fourth down. It's fourth and five. The ball is on the seven. 140 to go, 14 to 12, and we've had a great ball game, Chuck. Mitch Jackson split out here on the near side, the only wide out on this side. They got one on the far side of the field. Kim Honecker. Honecker in motion. The snap coming to Harmon. He's going to throw the football, and it's picked off in the end zone, I think. No, are they going to wave it off? Or yeah, they, he, did he hold on or not? Yeah, yeah they're saying touchback. Yeah, back, okay. So. Pikeville was signaling that he didn't hold on. The referee didn't really indicate much right off the bat, but it is hazard football on the interception in the end zone. That's the difference whether it comes to the 20 or it's on the seven. And they are, uh, isn't that a touchback? Yeah, Boston? it should come to the 20. Yeah. And he downed it in the end zone there. Harmon that time got the snap, rolled out uh, similar to the last couple of times he's run the football, but that time chose to throw. and. I think he was looking for Mitch Jackson in the end zone, but a hazard defender stepped in front of him and took it away. Look, looking for Jackson and uh, Honecker was in the area too, but anyway, uh, very costly turnover here. Hazard's got the ball now on the 20, a minute and 35 to go. And Olinger got some time to pass, and now the time runs out. He had that ball way too long. I mean, he had time to throw, Kevin, and that's a play there where that's kind of like what you'd call a coverage sack, I guess. Nobody open, and Olinger finally brought down as the Isaac Sanders pass protection broke down. Isaac Sanders in on the sack. The, the offensive line was not at fault that time. They gave him enough time to deliver the football or to run with the football or to throw it away, and he didn't do any of them. Hazard's only got one timeout, so that's... Olinger back to pass, runs into one of his running backs, breaks to the far side of the field, Coase throws back to the middle, has Campbell open at the 33, and he catches it and holds on, gets the first down. Olinger's pass complete to Campbell. Campbell got hit right up in that thigh area. Looks like he's got a Charlie horse, but he's going to stay in the ball game. Pick up a 12 for Campbell. Campbell, one of those big kids, you've got to hit him down around the knees and then the legs to bring him down. He's big enough to carry you if you tackle him up high. Olinger pass across the middle, open, in, and it's caught there. That's Meehan, I think, number 23 on the reception. Yep. Just a freshman, but he holds on, and he gets it up there to the 47. So Hazard, uh, in their version of a two-minute offense here, trying to get things rolling as they're up near midfield with 47 seconds left and counting in this ball game. Olinger over the middle, got Campbell. Campbell down to about the 41, 42. Let's see where they spot his forward progress, right around the 41-yard line, which is very close to another first down. 41-yard line, the 41-yard line of Pikeville. 37.8 seconds left in this one. Hazard keeps getting the ball up the field. Little 10 yard, eight, nine yard dink passes, getting the first down, stopping the clock and reloading. Olinger on the run, cuts it up toward the middle, gets through a couple of defenders and goes all the way down to about the 30 yard line, close to another first down. Carries the ball to the 31 yard line. 
Pikeville looks like they're doing this bend but don't break defense, Kevin. They're giving Hazard 8, 10 yards on each play, hoping that uh, that will run the clock down before Hazard gets a chance to score. But uh, Olinger and the Bulldogs don't seem to be thinking that's uh, the way they want to go. And Casey Rowe was leveled on that uh, play there. And Pipe looks like they've took a timeout here, Chuck, with uh, only 25.9 to go. It's a two-point game. And Hazard's been moving the ball on them. They're getting, you know, 9, 10, 11 yards a clip each time uh, Olinger throws a little pass. They've been getting a first down, which, you know, stops the clock, moves the chains. They're at the 30-yard line of Pikeville. And like we talked about that field goal, they're definitely getting close yeah. enough now. We're at they least still a, got a timeout to work with, too, don't they? No, it's there's or did they maybe take they, maybe No, they Pikeville was, took this one, didn't they? Well, mm -hmm. and they gave it to Hazard. They got a zero on their side there, and then Pikeville okay. still got their three. So I guess Hazard took the timeout, which say, well, I guess I the know. clock will keep moving. So, but anyway, we know it's probably passing down now because they probably wouldn't have time to run the play and First try to get back. Olinger drops back, throws across the middle again. That's Campbell. Campbell inside the 20. He's got another first down. That'll stop the clock with 21 seconds and move the chains up. Down to the 19-yard line. Pick up a 10, 11. Well, the prevent defense has prevented a touchdown, but it sure has not prevented Hazard from marching down the field and getting four or five first downs in a row. And Campbell once again cut, catches a football, and he goes down hard, but he holds on. Harmon on the tackle inside the 10 to about the seven-yard line. Should be first and goal Hazard. 12 seconds left. Oh, ho, ho, ho. This could be a huge, huge upset here. Hazard clicking on all eight cylinders right now offensively, and Pikeville going to call a timeout to talk about things defensively. They had to call a timeout. Here. Yeah. This Bulldog defense, or offense, Chuck has took the ball, and uh, they've been getting 10 yards a, a chunk. Yeah, and Olinger, you know, in the first half, every time he dropped back to pass, he was getting a lot of pressure. Uh, this last drive, he's getting some time and, and putting the passes on the money. And I'll tell you, uh, the Bulldog did a great job holding on to that ball after getting leveled by mm -hmm. Daniel Harmon. He took a lick, and when he went to the ground, you would think the ball should have came out of there, but he was able to hold on to it. And now the ball rest is on the 17. And well, it's actually, is it, it's on the 7. It's not on the 7, it's on the 7. And what, one play, Chuck, two plays, 12 seconds, what you got? Yep. Well, you Hazard's to... done real well passing the ball. I would assume here that, you know, with no timeouts on their side of the scoreboard, they're going to get an opportunity to at least throw a couple of times here, maybe three times if they can get the plays off fast enough. He's in the shotgun. We'll see right here. Got four wide outs. Olinger looks, avoids a player, and almost has it picked off as he throws low. Had a pass rush coming on him there. Tim Honaker in on him. He sidestepped Honaker, but threw a bad pass that was almost picked off in the end zone. Well, about eight seconds left. That play took about Five. three and a half, four seconds. So they may have time for two plays here if they can get the pass off quick. I'll tell you what, the uh, pipe almost was able to get in front of that one, pick it off like a Hazard did down here a while ago. Mm -hmm. Now, see, Hazard moved the ball because, uh, you know, they were throwing short passes and they had plenty of field to work with. Now, uh, down here, knocking out. on the door of the end zone, they don't have quite as much field to work with, and Pikeville can double up some of the Hazard receivers. Double cover them, because it's doubtful that Olinger is going to try to run the football unless uh, they just get a, a hole big enough for a truck to go through, and he sees it. Hey, this has been a lot better game than I anticipated, uh, Kevin. Uh, Hazard's given Pikeville everything they wanted and then some. Especially here in the second half, Chuck. I mean, it was seven to six at halftime, and uh, it's been eight to six the second half. <laughs> Pikeville's offense has kind of struggled here this second half, kind of like Louisville's last night. You know, they're capable of putting up some points and a lot of yardage, but Hazard's Young, unsung defense has answered the call tonight and uh, kept them in the ball game. 
could be maybe the final play here. 7.7 7 to go, 14 to 12, pipe ball over Hazard. Olinger back to pass. Got a loft one up and uh, gonna have a flag down there. The wide receiver couldn't get through the defense of Sword back there. He got held up and couldn't turn or make a play on the ball at all. And we've got another flag in the middle of the end zone. One in the corner, one in the middle. 3.5 to go pass interference against yep. Pikeville. Held that one. Hoskins, I think, was over in the corner there and That's got tied up with Sword and move it down a half distance, put it down on about the three and a half. It really doesn't matter a whole lot because even if you get an automatic first down, you've only got three and a half seconds left, so you're going to get one more play, whether it be from the seven or whether it be from the three and a half. You got one play and that's it. Ball placed on so the penalty eight. doesn't really hurt Pikeville all that much uh, this late in the ball game. They're going to line up and kick a field goal, Chuck, like we talked about here. Del Palm's going to line up. I tell you what, now they're going to have to block for him, and they're going to need to get to kickoff uh, in, you know, decent fashion. Uh, they does. waited way too long on that point after, and Pikeville got in on it and blocked it. Pikeville just now takes their last and final timeout to give him time to think about it. And Very makeable field goal. It's uh, even with the 10 yards in the end zone, and what about a 20, 21-yard kick, so not much longer than a point after. No. Oh, there's no doubt. He's got plenty enough leg. And uh, Chuck, it's been a great ball game. I mean, I tell you what, now uh, everybody's on their feet. And you and I talked about this field goal possibility. I was kind of wondering. I'm like, ah, the blocking hadn't been real good. Let's let's see what happens here. Could be a. They gave up too many chunks. Great victory or a heartbreaking loss, depending on how this field goal comes out. You hate for either one of these teams to go away losers, and uh, but somebody has to. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason why we play and why they keep scoring. But I'm telling you, uh, it's going to be very interesting right here. Like you said, the protection for the field goal is uh, going to be critical because on the extra point in the first quarter there, or second quarter. No pressure at all on this freshman kicker, is there? No. <laughs> Probably the biggest kick of his life so far. We'll see here. It's down, and it's good. It's through there. It looks like it's in there, and it is. And the Hazard Bulldogs, with no time on the clock, have kicked a field goal from 20 yards out and have uh, defeated the Pikeville Panthers by a final score of 15 to 14. What an amazing end to this ball game. Hard fought, even Steven, all the way. And well, the improbable happened. Uh, they got enough blocking that time, and he got enough leg on it, Kevin. Yes, he did. I mean, there was no doubt, Chuck. As soon as he uh, put his foot into it, you could tell. I mean, distance was not an issue. It was just a matter of the angle, and uh, he split the uprights. And uh, with that, the uh, Hazard Bulldogs have pulled off one of the biggest upsets in uh, the state of Kentucky so far in this 2006 uh, High school playoffs. Uh, you have a couple each week, and this is going to be one of them that's going to be talked about here. The Hazard Bulldogs, who were routed by Pikeville less than a month ago. Well, they were destroyed. Come back, and uh, I tell you what, their defense learned from that last game because they sure played a, a great ball game against a potent Pikeville uh, offense tonight. Yes, they did. Uh, tell you what, while we're sitting here watching the crowd, uh, we'll just go ahead and give some numbers. and. Uh, for Pikeville, Tim Honecker, uh, 0 for 2 in the passing category, no no uh, no completions, uh, nine yards rushing. Uh, Daniel Harmon, uh, eight carries for 58 yards. Ted Honecker, now that was his statistics for the year, for 94 yeah. yards, and that was the total yards. Of course, Tim Honecker, one yard touchdown run in the first quarter, and then. Uh, Tim Honecker, the block punt here in the third quarter uh, for Pikeville's other second touchdown for the Hazard Bulldogs to winner tonight. They'll advance to play the winner of the Somerset Harlan game. Uh, Tyler Olinger, 13 out of 24 in the passing category, 111 yards, 76 yards rushing. Austin Blanton, 15 yards rushing. Michael Campbell, 64 yards. And Greg Adams, 43 yards. Receiving uh, Mike Campbell, 66 yards. Uh, Hoskins, 23. Meehan, 21. And Adams, one catch for two yards. And uh, Chuck, you know, 
I will handle this team pretty good about three weeks ago, but tonight it was a totally different story. And you could tell from the get go that Hazard was uh, in here to play for. They've been here to play for keeps. That first quarter, they kind of set the tone, and they never did get away from their game plan. And I, I don't know if you want to say the Pablo may have overlooked them or something, but uh, you definitely, after a, you know, a 40 to seven uh, blowout, maybe they did overlook. I kind of wondered, you know, you know, they had, Hazard had the ball with less than two minutes in the first half, had a first down, had good field position, and kind of just run out the clock. And I'm like, well, they're down, but uh, what they talked about at halftime must have uh, sunk in because Olinger came out and they started uh, using those short passes and that really opened up the game and the offense for them. Uh, they had a great second half throwing the football. Oh, yeah, and, uh, Olinger, uh, that last drive uh, that Hazard put together, there wasn't any time really on the clock and they were getting 10, 11 yards a clip and just moving right down the field. and. Worked the clock beautifully and had time to get that last second field goal. And like you talked about, there's a lot of underclassmen out here for this Hazard Bulldog team. And Tyler Olinger, uh, the tradition just keeps on going in the Olinger family over there as far as quarterbacks in this Hazard Bulldog. And, uh, you know, we our hearts go out to the Pival Panthers, but you yeah. have to take your hands another off. Another year, Pikeville had another, you know, great season yeah. and uh, come up just a little bit short. Uh, they had kind of an unlucky run the last uh, five, six, seven years. They've won the district. They've gone down state a little bit, but have not been able to get back to the state championship carpet in Louisville uh, like they did back in the 90s. So with that, uh, once again, we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. As, uh, I'd like to tell everyone to tune in to WPRG and get the playback of this game, and then also the Belfry Prestonsburg game. And Dr. Then, uh, Don's got the Veterans Day uh, celebration uh, events going on uh, this weekend on uh, Intermountain Cable as well. So uh, with that, uh, we'll let Chuck go ahead and give the a, a sign off tonight. Well, we'll see you around the region uh, for another football Friday night uh, playoff style next Friday. But uh, for Kevin Tackett, for Dr. Don on the camera, I'm Chuck Scoville for Intermountain Sports wishing each and every one of you a great good night and have a wonderful weekend. See you next Friday.